All right, in an effort to clean out the garage that Jamie helped me clean out three weeks ago, but then immediately filled back up, we're gonna be painting this table, which is taking up most of the room. I don't know where it came from. I mean, it just happened. Like one day there was nothing in here and the next day it was here. How do you even know it was me? It came from Facebook Marketplace. Your little finger did it on the internet. <laughs> Anyways, this table set was given to us by my really good friend, so, and it's been hanging out in the trailer for a good month, but we got rid of the trailer, so we have to do the set now. So it's pretty roached, most of the finish is gone. It's got a bunch of permanent marker problems. So we also have a little bit of bubbling. We get asked a lot about this, like how to fix this, especially since this is a veneer on top with oak and underneath. So we're gonna go ahead and give you a full DIY and show you how to take this old roach set and turn it into farmhouse style. We're gonna try to get this entire table and set finished today. I'm gonna be spraying the base in DIY vintage linen and then I'll go ahead and sand the top down. I'm gonna spray first, that way if I get any overspray, I don't have to mess around with taping it off. I can just sand it back down anyway, so not a big deal. Okay, so I've already wiped this down just with some warm soapy water. It had all the usual things on it. I may still have to shellac in a few places where I get bleed through in the cracks. Someone needs to invent a mask that I can wear and still talk to you guys <laughs> while I'm working. So the first coat of paint is dry. I really only need one coat except for there's a couple places where there's some marker bleed through and a few stains from maybe old food or grease or something. Since it was a kitchen table, it's probably been hard used. Zinzer shellac is our go-to on this. It dries fast, a couple coats, and I'll be able to paint over that and the stain will be gone. So got the shellac all on here, got the stains all painted over with the vintage linen. Now we're gonna tackle this top. Now I often get asked, how can you tell that a tabletop is a veneer? And I'm not, it's bright out here, so I'm gonna do my best to get the camera adjusted right. But, so it, you can always tell a veneer when you have a repeating pattern in the wood grains. You can see this is a veneer, this was a piece of the same board, same board, same board, and so on. This is probably where it started. But you can see that pattern all the way across the table. That's how you know. And it may be solid wood underneath, but usually it's not a pretty wood. It's like plywood or like MDF, which is multi-density fiber board or some kind of particle board, something like that, that's underneath this veneer. Even on older tables all the way back to like the 50s and sometimes the 40s too, I'll find like a, a real cheap pine or something under the veneer. So when you see a pattern like this, you wanna be careful and make sure that you're going with a lighter grit on your table because you don't wanna just blow through that veneer. You wanna get the finish off, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, how you can tell once it's all the way off, but you don't wanna just sand all the way down through your veneer. So I'm gonna start out with an 80 grit, which is fairly aggressive, but not so much that if I leave the sander in one spot for a second or two, it's just gonna burn through it. So one other thing real quick, I have the leaf in. I'm gonna sand it with the leaf in. I may have to undo it and just do the edges, but you wanna be real careful not to roll those edges since it is a veneer, cause those are going to come off really fast if, you, if you're running down at an angle. You wanna keep that sander nice and flat. Okay, so you might be looking at this on camera where I already did the sanding and thinking, oh, that looks pretty good, sand it all the way down. There's some spots on here that are not going to take the stain and I'm gonna show you how to find them so that you can continue sanding so that you get a nice even finish. This works with traditional oil-based stains, but we're going to be using the real stain that we carry, which is a milk stain and it's water-based. And if I don't get this all the way down to the raw wood, that stain won't take in those spots and when I go to seal it, it's just gonna whisk it right on off and leave my stain splotchy. So I've just got water in here and I got it on the fine mist. I'm gonna spray the area that I just sanded and show you where the bright spots come up and that's where you need to keep sanding because the stain won't absorb just like the water won't absorb. I 
I just got this on a fine mist. So you can see here, I've got spots right here and right there. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it up in close so you guys can see it here. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but I've got these little spots right in through here and a couple places over here where it's a little lighter and that won't take the stain. So I'll wait for this to dry out again and then I'm gonna re-sand that back down so that it will absorb that water base. And same for oil-based stains. If that's not all the way sanded down, they're not gonna take as well. So I'm gonna spare you the boredom of watching me sand all of this off. It's gonna remove all the marker and things as I sand, so no issues there. But I did wanna show you how I sand these routered edges. So if they're a rounded router, kinda of like a uh, cove, I'll use a rounded piece of dowel or something and just some sandpaper and use that along my edge. But since I have this sharp angle right here, I've got just a scrap piece of two by four and it's got a 90 degree cut. So what I'm gonna do, I got my 80 grit sandpaper here. So I'm gonna fold my sandpaper right over the edge like that and I'm just gonna sand this edge right along there real nice and tight. And if you use an 80 grit sandpaper, it goes pretty quick. It takes it off real fast. And then once that's done, I'll just hand sand down here. But that way I keep my crisp edge. Okay, I'm pretty much done sanding, but I wanted to show you this spot right here. So I got over to this side of the table. I'm over here on the other end that I was working on and there was a raised spot in the veneer where the fiberboard or MDF had bubbled up and it sanded right through that to get that even. This spot isn't gonna take the stain the same way that the rest of the veneer would, but we have a fix for that and we're gonna show you. We're gonna put the stain on and then we'll show you how we fix that spot. So now we're ready to do real stain number two. Here's a little fact that you may or may not know about real stain. You can darken it or lighten it. To lighten your real stain, you can just water it down and to darken it, you just do multiple coats. We only had about that much real stain, which probably would have been enough, but I wasn't quite sure. So I watered it down about 50%, so we'll get a lighter stain. I definitely suggest testing it out, making sure you wanna lighten it before you do it, but it's a great way if you have just a little bit left to stretch it enough to finish a project. All right, do you see I don't have gloves? That's because real stain is water-based and all natural, and so it will wash right off my hands, no harmful chemicals. I wanna show you the difference between the original finish, what it looked like sanded down, and what it is with the 50% watered down real stain. So this chair, this yellow ugly oak, is what the original finish was. And then on this side, I haven't stained it yet, this is what it looks like without stain. And on this side, you can see it's kinda of grayed out, but still light. This is what real stain number two looks like when it's watered down 50%. And I'm probably gonna put one more coat over the top of this just to richen it a little bit, but it's a really great way to get light toned gray woods instead of the yellow. It's really popular in farmhouse right now. It used to be all about the dark stain and now the light stains are coming in. And that's why I really love these milk stains because you can get the looks that are trending right now without having to work super hard to get it. So we get asked a lot if you can mix fairy chalk mother paint with the DIY paint and the answer is yes. So this is 50% Fairy Chalk Mother Brookside and 50% DIY paint in Bohemian Blue. And the reason we mixed them today is because we had about two thirds of a quart of each and we didn't want to open a new can. We just, we decided we'd use this. So I'm gonna pour this in, get my paint gun set up and we're gonna spray some chairs. Wait for it. All right, so the paint's all mixed up. I've got it on my little table here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray the bottom side of this chair and then I'll flip it up and spray the top. And the reason I've got it up on the table like this is because it keeps me from having to bend over and I can also spin it on the table pretty easily. I should probably make up like a rotate, a rotary type situation that can spin the chairs, but I just haven't yet. So this is how we do it.
we are getting ready to dry brush the top of this. There was some damage on here that we couldn't fix, and so we're just gonna kind of camouflage it and give it a faux barnwood effect. I'm using Fairy Chalk Mother in Industrial. Really any shade of gray in the paints that I use will work. This is just what I happen to have on hand. I'm also using my Palm Pro brush. It works great for dry brushing. I'm just gonna dip the tip of my brush, get just a little bit of paint on there, and then I'm gonna wipe it off because you really want a dry brush. If you don't have your paint clothes on, just use like a damp rag or a towel or whatever, a rag. You're just gonna come across here. I'm going with the wood grain. Just getting a little bit of paint on here. And then Zeb's gonna follow behind me with a damp rag and kind of blur the lines a little bit. And because the real stain is wet, I may activate it a little bit. So I'm gonna be careful to make long, continuous strokes across so I don't get any weird discoloration if I stop in the middle. If you spill, it's okay. You just come in here. We're going for variation in tones. This should all be nice and blended when we're done. And if it's got some light spots and some dark spots, all the better. So anywhere that's specifically damaged, I'm gonna make sure to go heavy on that spot so that way it really covers it up. So if you don't have someone to help you, like we're tag teaming this here, do a spot, then wipe it off before the paint dries, do a spot, then wipe it off before the paint dries and just, you can get the whole thing done pretty quick. Do you need more water? Uh, sure. She need to do that spot. Okay, so I'm doing the same thing with the vintage linen that I did with the gray. I'm coming across and just adding in a white layer. With every layer, you're adding a little bit more dimension and interest and making it look a little bit more like barn wood. And it's okay on this layer, Zeb, if you leave a little bit of streaky. On the white, I like a little bit. Okay. So don't rub it all, 100% it. Maybe that one is too thick. All right, now that we're done with that, I'm gonna be taking my extra fine sanding sponge and I'm just gonna smooth everything out. And then I've decided it looks a little splotchy. So I'm gonna do one coat of the real stain too over the top. I'm gonna let Zeb do it because his arms are nice and long. And I'm gonna have him even everything out and hopefully we get the look we want. Really, the best thing you need to do when you're doing this kind of a finish is just keep playing with it. Add the grays, add the whites. You can add the real stain. It's all water-based, so keep playing until you get a look that you love. Okay, Jamie's got this buffed. I'm just gonna go in and hit it with a second coat over the whole thing with the real stain. And that's hopefully going to blend everything in, make it all nice and even, and just tie everything together. I'm using 220 on my DeWalt sander, and we're going to chippy this up. I'm sealing this today with Sweet Pickens Top Coat. We really like to spray Sweet Pickens Top Coat. It leaves a really nice matte finish when we're done. Yep, too hot. I'm gonna have to brush it. All right, so since I'm having to brush this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a quick coat on here and I'm gonna go in sections by the leaves and then I'll smooth this out. I'm gonna try to spray these chairs with sealer. We will see how it goes. It's still pretty hot outside, but uh, it's a lot smaller surface to try to keep even. So I'm hoping it'll be all right.
So it's been a while since we've done a table. I think the last table we did on a video was in last October. Um, but I feel like this turned out really great. You see a lot of these pressed oak tables and they got that big single pedestal and this is a great way to kind of upcycle them and make them more of like a modern farmhouse style look. Well, and the other thing too is that it's also a good way to use up what you've got. For the chairs, we mixed paint to make enough. In fact, it covered really well. So we've got enough. We've got three bar stools. I'm gonna paint the same color. And then it's also a way we watered down the real stain number two, and then we just used a dab of white and gray. So always, always, if you've got a little white and gray, do not get rid of it. Hold on to it because it's a good way to dry brush. You could even do like about eight parts water to one part paint and do a wash over a stain. Yeah. It covers up. I mean, you can still see there's blemishes and stuff, but we went for a barn wood finish. So it turned out really good. And the blemishes kind of enhance it. Yeah, it looks like it's more on purpose now other than something that needs to be discarded into the dump. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna give you a brief rundown of what we used and then be sure not to tune out quickly because we're gonna give you close-ups of everything at the end of this video. On the table, we used vintage linen on the bottom. On the top is real stain number two, watered down 50%. So we've got a lighter color. We did two coats of that. We dry brushed on some vintage linen and some industrial by Fairy Chalk Mother. And then the chairs, we showed you how you can take the two brands of paint that we carry, the DIY and the Fairy Chalk Mother, and mix them. We used 50-50 Bohemian Blue to Brookside to come up with this color which is really close to Fairy Chalk Mother Denim or Moody Blue by Sweet Pickens. So if you want a similar color and don't want to have to buy two, you could just get those. All sealed with Sweet Pickens top coat and then we brushed on the top because it's so hot, it was drying so fast and getting streaky. We used that Wooster brush, so I'll make sure that Zeb puts the Amazon link. Yeah, it made all the difference to do the foam brush rather than to just spray it on. It's such a large surface, I was it was drying so quick, I was never going to get it even. So instead of fighting it, I just broke out that foam brush and you can't, like looking at it here across, I can't even tell that it was brush. It looks, I mean, there's no brush marks at all. So it really helps us if you share this video. If you have anyone that has a table like this and is looking to update it, be sure you're sharing it with them. We covered a ton of tips and tricks in this video. If you have any questions that we didn't cover in this video, be sure to comment below. We're happy to help you out with your dining set or any furniture related DIY. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.